All right, well, uh, for my presentation here, I'm going to kind of switch gears a little bit. Um, and instead of talking about the uh, tech specs necessarily of using video on the web, I'm kind of going to go to the opposite side of that and kind of show you um, some of our, the experiences that I've had through virtual university um, and actually producing and developing content to be used on the web. When all these videos and stuff were done, they're done for a, a multitude of different reasons. Some of them end up on store media, others end up on DVDs, others end up on YouTube even. Um, so I'm Sean Leahy from Virtual University. Um, and one of the things I was gonna talk about today is what I call mobile lecture capturing. Um, this is something that was, we kind of started at VU about, oh, about a year and a half ago now. With the, 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 the initial problem that was brought to us was, okay, there's a lot of unique um, experiences or lectures or workshops that happen around the globe. And unfortunately, in a lot of those places, we don't have the luxury of having beautiful facility, facilities like the one we're in right now with professional audio and professional video equipment. So then the, the big question becomes, how do you actually record these lectures or workshops that take place all across the country on a very short time frame of notice and to do it as cheaply as possible while still trying to produce the highest quality output that we can get? Um, so just to give you a little background here on why we want to capture these, um, again, a lot of times these events are once in a lifetime opportunities. It's a speech or a lecture given by a, you know, an academic or someone in a professional field, and it's a, it's a one-time thing. They're going to be in one location, one time only, and that's your only chance to get it. Um, another thing is a lot of um, workshops and a lot of uh, other type of um, big kind of events and workshops and lectures that are grant funded are also now coming with some stipulations that say you need to share all the information and all the stuff that comes with this um, you know, workshop or, 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 or lecture with as many people as possible. So a way to, to fulfill that grant application, a lot of people are going to capturing the actual materials and stuff, what happens at these lectures, and then broadcasting them to as many people as possible. And another reason is to get educational material. Um, a lot of times it's very valuable to record some of this stuff and then use it in classrooms or as like training materials. Uh, for example, this is an example of, of, a, of a shoot that I did in uh, Rwanda back in 2008. Um, it was, this was one of those once in a lifetime type of a deals. We had a very unique uh, gathering of um, industry professionals in pest management control that were doing a workshop in the, in the rural uh, countryside outside of, of Kilgalia, the capital of Rwanda. Um, so this is one of the, the instances where I was deployed with this uh, basically camera gear and equipment to try to capture these type of things as they were happening so it could be shared with other people in the industry who maybe couldn't afford to attend these lectures uh, or workshops and then as educational material for people in the field of like agriculture and in, in, uh, in this case pest management control. Um, another, th another reason we use it a lot of times is to create open educational resources that are used for training purposes around the globe. Um, so this is a, a, a screenshot of a combined capture of a presentation at a podium and along with a PowerPoint presentation kind of packaged up in a nice little player that is then can be um, made available for free to the world uh, so that people, again, who don't have the ability to go to Shanghai, China for this particular one can actually view and consume all this information. Um, similarly, this is just an example of, this is from the same Rwanda shoot from 2008, but a training DVD was actually developed um, out of that material to then be distributed to people all across the world that are into uh, pest management control. Um, so we, when originally when we were thinking about this, the one thing that we were um, struggling with the most, especially given the biggest stipulation that we're trying to get the highest quality at the cheapest price possible. So we had to start with the equipment. Um, so what we did is we kind of developed a kit. It's a pretty basic kit that you can take that one or two people, depending on the redundancy of the, of the equipment that we want to take, can actually strap all this stuff onto a backpack, take it through the airplane, take it to some location out in the middle of nowhere if need be, and try to get the best possible video quality, uh, again, with, at the cheapest price. Now, it's not necessarily dirt cheap because there is some, there is some expense involved. Um, the key thing is if you have it in your budget, you gotta go for the highest quality stuff you can get. Don't spare any expenses if you have it in your budget. So the key is high-end video. The higher quality video camera you start with, the higher quality video output you're gonna get from it. Also, the audio. As it was mentioned earlier before, you will get called out big time if you have this really terrible audio on your video. So spend the money, get the, prof get the most professional equipment that you can, um, again, under your budget. 
and then also to you, especially in our case, we have to have the ability to do um, a lot of mobile stuff, a lot of moving around from you know, um, different locations outside. So again, weight becomes an issue also. So we like to use uh, lightweight fluid uh, heads and carbon fiber tripods just to cut down just on the weight itself. Um, also, we normally tote with us, so, you know, a couple laptops, either a Mac or a PC. Um, for a lot of the stuff we've been doing, we've been using Camtasia to kind of package different video um, feeds together and to create an output. So we've been running either a Mac or a PC running Windows and running Camtasia with that. Um, so basically, the three different types of mobile lecture captures that we redo are basically kind of three main categories, a controlled, a limited control, and a field lecture. Um, so what are the differences? Well, a controlled lecture is one um, that is the nicest to do a lot of times because it's usually a, a, a nice hotel or some other main facility, um, typically in a, in a very stable environment. Um, this is just a screenshot of um, a conference center in Shanghai that we use. A perfect example of a controlled environment. Very stable location. Um, you know, we had controlled lighting, we had controlled audio, and we had reliable power, which becomes a big issue. Um, we still have some issues we have to deal with when in a very controlled setting. Um, again, because we are out there, we don't have like these nice massive facilities, we have to just deal with the equipment that we bring with us. Recording media, are we recording to tape, to hard drive, to P2 cards, what are we recording to? We've got to make sure we have enough and we have to make sure that it, the, the actual recording process doesn't get interrupted uh, because of lack of media or something. Also audio levels, uh, especially when we're dealing with line in, sometimes if we have like an on-site audio group, um, the line in quality can be suspect and we need to resolve that issue. Um, positioning, if sometimes in these nice facilities we are limited to where we can actually physically set up to do the recording, so that becomes an issue that we'll have to resolve as well. Typically for this type of a setup, what we'll use is either one or two cameras, again depending on the uh, desired output and how much time and effort is required by the client that we're using who is actually going to then you know, package this material out afterwards. Um, tripods for the cameras, obviously a must, especially in a very controlled environment. Um, the lack of one is just really not acceptable um, for the, just the quality of the video that you actually get out of that. Um, laptop computers, typically in a very controlled environment, will always have cameras recording and will always have um, usually a laptop that's going that's uh, recording redundantly what the presenter is actually going over, whether it's a PowerPoint slide or a video or anything like that. Um, for audio, we have a wireless mic system that we can use if there isn't an in-house audio. A lot of times in these very controlled ones, we're lucky and there is actually um, some like an in-house audio group. So in that case, we'll just borrow a line in from them. Um, and sometimes if we have to do stuff that's translated live, that becomes very handy because we can just split the audio. We can put English on one channel, Chinese or whatever it is on another channel, and then we can use, you know, back when we're editing that, we can 